So I'll start going through some of the stuff, and then um, then we, if I don't know it, I'll just make something up. You probably don't know. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> so so uh, as you see, at the moment we're three people here on the bridge: me, second officer in charge of the watch. Then I have my third officer here, uh, Philip, also from Sweden. Both of us Swedish. And then I have my lookout here, Gibo from the Philippines, and his job is as it says lookout. So <laughs> kind of self-explanatory, but yeah. Uh, so uh, at the moment we're heading that way, as you yeah. can see. Yeah. <laughs> um, you just missed there was just a big uh, vessel just passing us by here, but otherwise you can see very, very calm um, with traffic and traffic. At the moment, as you can see, this red line here on my radar is the line that we're following, and hopefully, if we follow that one, we get to St. John, as long as the <laughs> navigation officer has done his job. <laughs> No, but it will take us around here on the Newfoundland and then it brings us in there to uh, St. John's to make it in about uh, around 9.45 pilot tomorrow morning. So we get there in one day early. So we have just something to compensate for the port that we weren't able to get into. Um, so at the moment we're steering the ship in autopilot. That means that Philip is driving the ship with this little joystick here. So that one is controlling that's what we're running the ship with. So these four diesel electric generators are the ones that we can take two or one, uh, sorry, in one when we're in port or two, four, three, depending how much power we need. So about 30% of the load that we're making from these generators goes to the hotel. So lights, everything like that around the ship. And uh, the rest of 70 goes to the propellers and so on. So that's what's pushing us up. At the moment we don't have since we're coming in early, we don't have so high speed, so we don't need to use that many engines. So we're producing one bigger one and one smaller one at the moment to generate the power. But they're all diesel electric. Port, we'll push it to port. If we want to go to starboard, we'll push it to starboard. And if we don't want to do the turn faster or slower, we go up in the radius how fast we want to turn. When we're going in and out of the port, we usually use the steering wheel here. It's the cover because it is overriding. So if you would press it now, it would take cut out the autopilot and go for that one. So it would be <laughs> turning the ship. So just have it covered there so nobody by accident hits it. So that will be uh, when we're going in and out of the port. We will go up in Manning. The captain, the staff captain, and the local pilot will come up on the bridge, and they will be the ones uh, doing the uh, with the officers also getting the ship into port. And then one hour. But, uh, the idea is primarily actually for the passenger scenario that you choose a trip and not the ship. Yes. Right? So all the ships are the same, same. and you don't have to worry uh, you know, where and who is on. It's the same operation. Right? So once you come back here as a repeat second time, you know where the restaurants are and what everything called. And how to get around the ship. That was the primary focus. But of course, it has an effect for us. Uh, if, um, let's say, we are moving around the ships, it's, it's easy. Uh, you know, can spare parts and things logistically, or, or uh, we can borrow things from each other. So yes. Right? Would you it's, switch over to the Explorer ships? Or yeah, is no, that totally no, different? It's, it, well, we can, from a license point of view, yes. Uh, but. Uh, and, and let's say practically also, it's, it's not that much difference. They are, they are built different and that's a different series. But you need the polar uh, certification uh, oh. and, and experience in polar waters to be there. I see. Uh, so that, that can be uh, difficult. So if you are only doing this, let's say Caribbean, Mediterranean and so on, and, and you don't have a polar certificate, then you can't call it. Uh, but you can, you can get it from other means. So your career or something. What has been the most uh, significant? Viking Mars, Viking Mars, Halifax Coast Guard Radio, Halifax Coast Guard Radio, over. Halifax Coast Guard Radio, Viking Mars. Viking Mars, Halifax Coast Guard Radio, go channel 26, over. Channel 26. Yeah. Might be a medical situation we had the other day, so it might be an update. Halifax Coast Guard Radio, Viking Mars, channel 26. <laughs> so, so, Mars use the same circuit all the time? 
I mean the same voyages. Yeah. Um, more or less, uh, okay. I would say. So we've been in the Baltic, Norway, uh, over to Greenland, Iceland, and then here the northern coast, and then uh, Panama, Florida is, is basically from, from now in October until March. Where have you found the roughest seas? Well, the biggest swell is normally south uh, of Australia and New Zealand. There you have all the Southern Ocean uh -huh. coming in. Uh, so there are long swells uh, normally. And then, uh, let's say, storm and wind waves and so. Uh, well, this, this is not really that big. No. Uh, but if you're closer to, let's say, the hurricanes, that builds up very quickly. Uh, and I've mostly been in Japan and Southeast Asia, another company, uh, with typhoon seasons, which is the same as hurricane seasons. Uh, and there you have yeah. rough seas if you end up in the wrong spot. <laughs> <laughs> so that, uh, as a cruise ship, you always try to avoid, uh, let's say, first, ship safe, right? Second, people on board safe, tax or crew. Uh, later, let's say, smaller version, it's comfort. Right. How can we, you know, keep it as nice as possible? Because you're here on vacation, right? Uh, not that you spend two weeks uh, seasick. <laughs> uh, and then, of course, you have uh, all the other, let's say, tours, itineraries, activities on board, uh, and so right. So you're you're always looking for good weather, and you also stay away from bad weather. And where do you get all your weather f service from? As it appears, it de oh, depends where we are, really. Uh, right. You have all the local, national, um, uh, let's say, websites. Uh, so in the US here, for instance, we can use NOAA, and you get some data there, uh, which is quite extensive. If yes. You're in, in Asia, you have either Japan or Hong Kong or, or China. Philippines also have a fairly good one when it comes to tracking, uh, let's say, storms. Uh, if you're down in Singapore, that's not so much, uh, let's say, bad weather since they're close to the equator. It's more uh, rain, visibility, that kind of thing. Uh, so it, it depends where you are. But, right. but as a general concept, we actually use Windy a lot. Windy with the really? subscription, you get all the national weather models uh -huh. into that one nowadays. And you can choose what model you use. And it's the same as the official sites are using. Right. Uh, so it's actually quite effective. And the benefit of that is you can replay and you can forward project how the weather will be. Uh, I've been having fun going to the NOAA site for their buoys, where you can drill down each buoy yeah. and see all the weather conditions, yeah, yeah. wave heights, everything. But the thing is, that's Gosh. real time or, or very close yeah. to real time. That doesn't say anything about how it will be. Right. that's more important for us. What's it going to be tomorrow or right. this evening or this afternoon, right? So nowadays you have basically everything on, on the phone. Right? <laughs> we have it on the computers also, but, but you, you look ahead of time, right? So this weather here, we know about it more. But if it's nothing to do, actually just to have two guys talking to each other, discussing, keeps you alert, right? Yeah. Uh, and also now, if, if you have a, let's say, a, a classic cargo ship scenario, one man on watch and one lookout, they don't speak to each other, the bridges are very big, and you have a lookout standing on the side there, traditionally, right? And they stand and be mesmerized and fall asleep, yeah. right? <laughs> but that's not a good idea. Yeah. What, what is your... So, so it, is, it is about keeping occupied and talking. Uh, what, yeah, is your training? what is your yeah. training and what's his training? I'm sure he wants to be a captain sometime. Sure, he waits what? for me to <laughs> have a <long> time. <laughs> So what do, you have to, what do you have to do to push him off the off side? Look for the slippery stairs. Slippery stairs. Yeah. Okay. So how Actually, the staff captain how's is the, the training, one waiting. How's the training to go for you? Yeah, so we have the same education uh, background. We go to nautical college. Uh, and, and this case it's uh, both in Sweden right so we have two main schools there um, used to be more but uh, now it's just main two main universities you can say okay and uh, you studied to be a, a deck officer or an engineer so you have to choose right? so in our case we were a deck officer uh, and then you get your first license uh, normally you're if you come to a cruise ship you start as a third officer if you come to a 
cargo ship, you have the license as second officer. But you can start as, as let's say, fourth officer, third officer, or second officer based on that license. And then you continue working, and after a while you have earned, uh, let's say, the right to be a chief officer on a certain size and a certain location in the world, uh, and, and so on, right? So you can have limitation on, on a license based on size of ship or area of operation. Mm. Or you have no limitation, ocean-wide and, and over 3,000 gross tonnage, it's uh, any size. For example, the so. crisis Viking faced off of Norway two years ago. What, uh, it was what, a couple of more years. Is it was a couple yeah, more years. Yeah, yeah, what is the lesson that Viking then teaches the rest of you from True. that experience? Yeah. Uh, you have two avenues really of, of uh, the experience based. And it's either safety related for crew, regular crew, right? What can we learn from the event as, as a whole? on safety training, right? So we bring that one up as, a, as an example. It can go this bad very quickly. So you have to prepare for the worst, right? Plan for the worst, hope for the best. The classic scenario, right? Uh, so that we incorporate in, in our, uh, let's say, weekly general emergency drills, right? Full-scale evacuations, uh, damage control, or, or fires is a normal scenario as well, right? So, and we put in any, in not just not just that event, but any form of, uh, let's say, big accidents. What is new here, what is missed out, and so on. Right? So Does that captain go and share his information to, in a seminar format to other captains? This is what I did, this is uh, what I should have done. Not, not like formally, no. No. This is not the uh, event. Yeah. Uh, but there, we have reports on the event itself, and you look through, yeah. let's say, do's and don'ts, experience-based uh, causes, uh, contributing factors, uh, and so on, right? So any accidents, big or small, uh, are going through the same process, right? So let's say, so why did it happen? How did it happen? When did it happen? And so on. And then you go through, okay, how to avoid it? Is it procedure, training, skill? Uh, breakdowns and so on, right? Is it linked to maintenance issues? Is it linked to uh, procedures or behavior? Whatever it is, right? And that becomes the basis of, of uh, let's say, not repeat, right? So that, that's one part of it. The, that event in itself is also based on how this affects it, right? So if you go in now, let's say outside of Florida when the Milton is passing, you're going to end up in trouble. It doesn't matter how well trained the crew is right? and how well built the ship is. The, the mother nature is much worse than we can imagine. So once again, how are we not getting there? That's the pre-planning of voyages and cancellation of, of let's say, time schedule and so on. And we had a, a Viking uh, ship going into Florida uh, Fort Lauderdale, basically by the time uh, it's supposed to pass, so what's the end result? You can't go in there, so you it passed south and, and turned around and just waited it out and then come in one day later. That's mm -hmm. how you avoid getting into issues. Planning, pre-planning, watch out and, and don't do this, do that. Okay. Yeah. The reason I ask that question is, in my profession, when you go to a meeting, you come back and you share okay. that experience with your other colleagues. So yeah. Yeah. while they can't attend the meeting, they get some first-hand yeah, yeah. information. So I just wondered how. Uh, no, no, we have a we have an internal system that sort of uh, gives out weekly reports, uh, technical reports or, or accident reports, and that comes on a regular basis. So that is read by all the people. Yeah, okay. It's a bit of doom and gloom, but uh, yeah, I'll try yeah, not to do that. Huh? Uh, is it uh, good news for people in that chair that you're having more ships? Yes, of course. Because there's more captains. Yes, of course. And if you've uh, already trained them, it's an expanding, nice expanding fleet is, from a career point of view, is always a positive thing because you know you're not going to end up in each chair for too long. <coughs> what we normally do is internal recruit, recruit, so to speak. So is this position ready for next step? Yeah. Yes. Okay. As soon as there's an opportunity, he might move.